Welcome along guys, welcome back to the garage. Well, as you've seen in the title, I have purchased myself a new motorcycle for this year. I don't know if it was a case of uh, winter blues, you know, I've just been searching eBay for a little while. Um, a bit bored over Christmas, actually managed to catch COVID over Christmas. So, you know, it wasn't very well, I couldn't go out, spent too much time on eBay and um, I bought myself a new bike. I was very aware that I didn't have a track bike for this year, you know, of course, the BMW 1000 R I was using last year went back to BMW. The H2 is just too noisy for the track, and at two and a half thousand pounds a panel, you know, a fairing panel, if you come off it, way too expensive. The SMCR is going to be good for smaller tracks and stuff, and the Ducati, the Hypermotard, when that's done, will be good for medium tracks. But I had nothing for sort of larger tracks, so I thought, should I buy a track bike? And I thought, well, there's no point just getting a dedicated track bike. That's just a waste of a of a slot in the garage. So the bike I buy has to be used on the road as well. Sort of a replacement for the BMW, to be honest. A road bike, track bike, a bit of a touring bike. So I started scanning eBay. I was looking, uh, I'm a bit of a Fireblade fan, as you know. So I was looking at sort of RR6, RR7 Fireblades. You know, that's a 2000, 2006, 2007 Fireblade. You know, with the under seat exhaust. I've always quite liked those. That's the same engine more or less, which was in Beastie. So I was looking for those, I was also looking for anything else, good condition, you know, and this bike popped up on eBay and I thought, God, that looks immaculate. It was a little bit more money than I wanted to spend, but I thought, well, I know what I'm like, if I buy a bike and it's tatty in places, I'm only going to end up replacing those panels and spending money on it to get it to the condition I want it to be. So I thought, well, I should just spend a little bit more now, get a bike which looks pristine, and then, you know, it's, what I've bought is really almost too good for the track. It's incredible. It's a 2008 bike. It's got 14,000 miles and it is beautiful. It's a bike I've never owned. Well, I'll tell you what, let's go outside and I'll give you a quick walk around of it. But uh, it is beautiful. Let's get outside. There she is, there's a new bike, 2008 GSX-R 1000. This is the K8 version, 14,000 miles, as you can see, pristine. I wasn't really looking for a GSX-R, as I say. This one just came up and it was just so clean. I, I just really have to, had to have it, you know. It's so, I mean, look at the calipers, I mean, it's, it's incredible. This bike is 14 years old I, I can't even really find any marks on the front of it it's a one owner bike so the guy has had it from new um, but it's uh, absolutely absolutely immaculate all the rear sets you know the fasteners engine bolts and even the shock you know, <laughs> it, it's all really really nice condition it's got the optional arrows, so it's got an arrow either side. It's still got the cat in here, but because this is 2008, you know, the Euro regulations are just a, a relatively small cat. So it's got the twin arrows, which apparently were an option from Suzuki, you know, when the bikes were new. You could, you could spec them for extra 500 pounds with the arrows. So it's got those. Even inside the fairing, I mean, look in there, it is immaculate. And the great thing about the K8, these headers are actually titanium. So you've got titanium headers as standard. The bike is completely original, even got tail tidy, you know, absolutely original. All the standard stickers on the tank, you know, completely original, this bike. Not messed with at all, absolutely standard. Now, you know me, I like to uh, tinker with my bike. So this is so original though, I'm not gonna do too much to this he says now, but I'll probably put a tail tidy on it. Um, I will take probably the baffles out of the exhaust. It's got baffles held in with circlips. So I'll probably take the baffles out. I'll start it in a minute and you can hear it, you know, a cold start. I've not ridden this yet. You know, the roads are wet through. I'm not taking this out until it's a bit drier, but just riding into the garage, the riding position is so comfortable. The bars are, you know, really high compared to any modern sports bike, even the S1000RR. Like I said, I've just literally ridden out my drive into the garage, but they feel really high. So I think it's going to be really comfortable. 
as well, but uh, I'm really excited about this bike. Of course, it has some engine maps, so you can adjust the maps. It's got three engine maps, but that's it. No other electronics, no ABS, no traction control, you know, a completely analog bike. Obviously it's fuel injected, but um, and you've got adjustable engine maps, that's it. Apart from that, you know, there's nothing else. Quite nice, on the GSXR you get a gear indicator, which you don't get on, on the Fireblade. You know, the RR7 Fireblade, you don't get a gear indicator. Time, temperature, you know, but pretty basic. Obviously no quick shift of lippers, nothing like that. I could add a quick shifter to it. I may do, I'm gonna see how I get on with it, but you can see like the top yoke, no marks on the top yoke whatsoever. The suspension adjusters, not butchered at all, you know, like new all of the switch gear, handlebars, <laughs> tank, you know, it is 14 years old. It's got 14,000 miles. You know, single owner, the guy must have absolutely cherished this bike. The only marks I can see on it is there's a slight scuff on the uh, mirror there, tiny little scuff on the mirror, and there is the most tiny marks here, you know, tiny little marks. But you know, nothing else. The, the light is pristine. All the plastics, the grills are all pristine. Also what's quite nice, the clutch is hydraulic. So it's got hydraulic clutch. You know, normally now these are all cable. Get a bit of a nicer feel with a hydraulic clutch, I always think. You've got the slave cylinder down here, but even all the, you know, these fasteners, these standard brake lines and hydraulic lines normally really corrode and there's none of that, you know, the rear sets are immaculate. It's obviously never been ridden in the rain. You know, the chain looks like new and I've got loads of receipts with the bike and this chain, I think he bought this chain. I saw it in the receipts. I think it was bought in 2016. I think that chain was bought. You can see, you know, it's been loved. No marks on the uh, swinging arm, you know, the exhausts. There's absolutely no marks on the exhaust. I've got the standard cans as well. The standard cans have never been fitted. They're still in the box, unfitted. Also what I love about the GSX-R from this era, all the indicators are integrated at the back and at the front. So you've got indicators integrated in the front mirrors as well. Because of course, you know, indicators of bikes of this age are always massive. So they're always nice that they're integrated on the GSX-R. So I'm now a Gixxer boy. Under the seat on older bikes, you normally get a little bit of storage. I've not even looked under here yet. Toolkit, factory toolkit still in there. And you've got room, you know, cut the Big Macs in there. No problem at all. You've actually got a bit of storage in here and a little bit of storage down the, the fairings if you so add just some cloths or something. Storage on a modern, on a sports bike. I'm gonna say modern sports bike. Storage on a sports bike. It's unheard of these days. I'm dead chuffed with this. I think, I don't think you could find another one like it. If you've got a GSX-R K8 or you know, similar, similar age, is there any more in this condition anymore? You know, I bought a bike that I wanted to do a few track days on. It's, it's, it's almost too nice to contemplate taking on track. But, you know, I did take a brand new S1000 RR worth 20 grand on track. So, you know, this is obviously not a 20 grand bike. It, it's almost criminal to take it on track, but I'm going to be really careful. You know, it's only going to be the odd days on track, but it's going to be, a, you know, I think I think a beautiful road bike. So next time, or as soon as it dries, I don't get a dry day when it's not wet and salt on the roads. So I'll take this out for a spin. We'll do the first test ride on it. And actually what I'm planning to do for this season, this has whetted my appetite for older bikes. So I'm going to do a whole series of videos on the best bikes of the decade. And the first decade I'm going to do is the best bikes of the noughties. So I'm going to ride as many noughties bikes as I can. They're the ones which change things, the ones which moves the technology on. Because this is where bikes really changed. You know, this, this is the age of bikes which the modern bikes are based off. This bike only weighs 172 kilos wet, dry, sorry. 172 kilos dry. That's a kilo lighter than the S1000RR M Sport. It's a kilo lighter than M Sport. It's 185 horsepower, so that's 20 horsepower down on a modern bike, but 185 horsepower with no electronics is more than enough for anyone, I would argue. So yeah, I'm gonna do a whole series of bikes of the decade. Once we've done the noughties, we'll do the nineties, you know, and we'll, we'll, I'll ride the best bikes of the era. So if you've got an iconic 
bike from the from two, from 2000 to 2009 or from you know 1990 to 1999 let me know i'd love to ride some two strokes and we will do a proper series of older bikes because people always ask for older bikes and uh yeah this is what i really wanted an older bike and this thing is beautiful so i'm a very very happy chopsy and join me next time for the test ride because i can't wait to ride this What a beauty.